quick recording to demonstrate one approach to making a triangular box, so creating angles on the surface of an existing group. Now this is a group, it's our profile, we've got 140 millimetres by 12 millimetres and in this case, just for the example, I've made it 70 millimetres, oh, pardon me, 200 millimetres across. Now we know that a triangle has 180 degrees inside it, so what if we made our two bottom angles 70? And our top angle, therefore, would be 180 minus 70 minus 70, which is going to end up with a result of 40. So the first thing we'll do, we've got our base. Um, we can modify it from there. But we might as well use our base to create our sides as well. So I'll hit the M tool, and I'm going through the shortcuts on the keyboard. So I'll talk those through as we go. M for move. And then uh, I think you press Control on the Windows machine to create a duplicate. I'm going to move it up on the blue axis. That gives me um, the group to be um, in line, if you like, with my base. Now the next thing we need to do is rotate our group because this will be one of the sides. When I roll over this, we simply rotate it down. Looking down in the bottom right here, we have our angle. Now don't be confused. At the moment it begins with 180, but as we rotate it down, it's going to show a negative figure. We know that we want to rotate it about 70 degrees, so I'm just going to type in 70, and that's given us an exact 70. Now, um, for the argument, I might as well, and I probably should have done this the first time around, I'm going to hit M on this, Control, and just make another one, and why don't we rotate this one as well? This time we'll take that, typing in 70. Pardon me, done a mistake. I'm going to have to alter that, we'll try minus 70, there we go. So you can type in a negative figure. Now the issue you'll see here, when we move this point, wrong piece, I'll put that there for now, get it out of the way. Let's select this one and move it from there to here. Now this might be fine if we were happy to have an angle here of our timber when it's finished. But what if we wanted to make it flat? So the first thing we will do is extend this piece down. That's one approach to doing it. The other is actually to move it so that we're cutting off that material. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, let me just demonstrate. So we need to edit the group. We double click it, push pull, and we can just bring it down any nominal amount. If you want to use SketchUp to design and work out uh, how the drawing works, this is the easy way. The more difficult way is doing the maths to actually consider all of the issues. But for us, my constraint is the angles of the pieces and we will work from there using a 200 millimeter base. So I might as well just go and show you again on that. On this side, we'll select that group. We'll move it and let's just put it here so that these two little, notice it's snapping to that surface and I'm going to select it, push pull and double click, push pull and just bring it out a lot like that. Now what we've got, you can see our tops haven't joined, so we're gonna need a much longer piece of wood and I can extend that out using push pull, we'll get to that in a minute. And I'm gonna zoom in here. Now, obviously when we make this, this surface here needs to be cut along there. How do we do that? The easy way to do it would be to edit this group, first of all by clicking it, and then I'm going to draw a line. Now SketchUp's clever enough to know that although we're editing this group and I'm going to draw a line on this group, the reason for that is that it will then create two surfaces. I'll have this little triangle and this bigger section. So I'm going for my line tool and I'm going to draw it. It snaps into place at that intersection and it will snap here at that intersection. If I let go now and use my push-pull you can see that I've got two surfaces. Now this is where SketchUp's really clever. SketchUp not only adds, it also removes. So let me show you here. If I push that back to this surface, see where it says on edge? What that's actually doing, let me give you a, a better description. I'm going to hide this and I'm going to show you here how, now we need to edit the group, pushing, 
I take it right back to the back and when you see that it comes up with this offset limited note and the things look a bit different when it gets to the end there. When I click, it's gone. That's the way that we can use push-pull to remove material from any part of our drawing. And that's why I like to use groups because we could never have done that if we had drawn this as an individual part. It just gets too awkward. Um, so we need to unhide any geometry that we've got. So you can see now that we've created a nice um, flat surface at an angle. We can get into measuring angles a bit later on. The next thing I might do is create a guide. So I go for my tape measure tool and clicking on any surface, what I want to do is have a guide that runs along there. That's going to be our guide to cut. So I'm just going to click on that line and let it go here because that's level with this base. Now what I need to do is edit this group, double clicking it, hitting my line tool, going into this little corner, going across to here, at, and at, at the intersection of the guide and the edge of that piece of timber, I've drawn a line. So you may not be able to see that line, but if I unhide, uh, let's turn up our guides for a sec, see now I've got that line, we'll put our guide back on, doesn't really matter. I'm still in edit mode, so my push-pull, you can see that I have two surfaces now, I'm gonna push-pull that back to there. And now I have made myself a really nice corner. I could do the same over here, but you've seen it, so why bother playing it all again? How would I approach the top? Um, if I was a more organized draftsman, what I would have done is drawn it all out so the material I started with was right, but I don't need to do that because I'm good at SketchUp. So I can just go for push-pull. Let's just make that really big. Let's edit that surface and make that really big, and the two of them are gonna cross over. Then we've got to say to ourselves, we can't really, that doesn't look right. When we're working with wood, if we cut it along here and along here, we're going to have this big open section. So how would the wood look when we cut it? It's going to go, it's going to join from there to there. So I'll just explain. I am now in this mode. I'm going to click here and to there because I'm editing that surface. I am going to now edit that. I've made a mistake. I didn't, I wasn't in edit mode there. So I'm editing now the piece of wood on the right and I'm drawing a line through it. And now with any luck, there we go. Let's rotate that so you can see it a bit better. I now have a push-pull surface that I can get rid of that. And I guess we want to do the same on this one. So we need to double click that one. I need to draw a line on that one as well. I'm going to draw that line up to there. I'm going to select that, push pull, and it's gone. So now that makes a lot more sense, I hope, that you've got two pieces of timber that are joined together in a much steeper angle up here. Now, if you want to know how to draw angles and guides, let's have a look at that. What we're looking to measure, for example, is this surface. Let's measure the angle from here. So how will I do that? Over here you've got a tool called a protractor. Now the protractor works, obviously there's the axis, which is, let's say this point, and the base, and then we measure up from there. So if you look down at the bottom, it says place the center of the protractor, and we can create guides, and so on. Now, because we're on this surface, it's on the red axis. But if I try to go onto another surface, you can see that it's hopping around. So that's pretty normal for the protractor. Sometimes you need to change your view. But I want to measure there, so I'm snapping in that end point. And then I'm going to put the base, because it says align the bottom of the protractor down the bottom of the screen in the hint. And then we just go up. Now notice over here, in our angle, when I go up and snap to there, on the, anywhere on that line, it should be giving me an angle I'm going to go right to there to prove it, of 70 degrees. And that's what we want. And it's actually also drawn me a guide. Can you see if I hide this? Notice the guide that it's created there? Now we can use guides. Let's just say, for example, I wanted to... Um, I'm going to draw a random line just from here to here. Hang on. 
get it to snap on that point. I want to measure that angle there. How do I do that? I'll go to, whoops, sorry, I'll go to protractor. I'll put my protractor in the bottom, just tell it what the base is, and then just roll up and it's going to give me the angle. Sorry, we didn't actually get to see the angle there, did we? I rushed. Click up and to there. Now we can see the angle is about that little symbol. It's called the tilde. Um, and it says about 53.4 degrees. Let's say I wanted to make an angle that was exactly 60 degrees. I am going to click where I want my angle to start. Click again to tell it where the base is. And then I'm going to roll up. Now I said I want an angle of 60, so I'm just going to type in 60. I now have a guide that's giving me a perfect angle in this little part here. So I, if I wanted to draw a line that was at 60 degrees to the base of my piece of wood, that would be it. And of course, I don't need those lines, so I can get rid of them. Whoops. So hopefully that explains a little bit more about how to do uh, how to do angles. And if you want a quick refresher, let's say I want to get rid of these guides. I'm going to go to Edit, um, Delete Guides, and then those guides go. Guides are very very powerful. Um, the Measure tool and the Protractor tool are also very handy. So we want to clean this section up. Um, let's start by getting rid of this material at the base. I will draw a guide. It doesn't matter that I've not selected the group yet. I mean, I've highlighted it, but I'm not editing it. I don't really care. I could, probably should, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go down to this line, but now I do need to edit this group because I'm going to draw a line on it. And if I am not in edit mode when I draw this line, the line won't create the two surfaces. See how I've got now two surfaces instead of one? So I'm going to go for my push-pull tool. Whoops, I'm still active on that one. Get there. Take it right up to that, just anywhere on that line, you can see it snaps off, and then we're done. Now, we already have a line here, so I don't need to do a guide or anything like that, but I do need to activate that group. Um, sorry, I said I already had a line, don't I? So now, I do need to draw a line on it, though, to separate the two surfaces, and then I can hit P for push-pull, and I'm just going to take it back there. I know it's at that surface and that's fine. If we click that and hide that just to check it, we're done. Um, let's just do something else. We'll undo the hide. Another way to do it, because I've got this on, is I can look at my x-ray. X-ray view gives us a good insight into what's going on. Interestingly with the x-ray view, it's still showing us the bounding box here of that, but that part is not there. So it doesn't matter. So that is our little triangular box. Um, and if we wanted to measure some angles inside it, we know now how to do that. Thanks.